I'll focus on one specific component or topic of this foresight curriculum, specifically point of care airway ultrasound and how point of care ultrasound can facilitate the identification and localization of the endotracheal tube within the trachea. Some more background. The use of the stethoscope to distinguish between trachea and bronchial intubation has been shown to be rather poor, with a sensitivity of only 60 to 65 percent. And let me try to highlight that, an example of that. Here is a recorded audio of uh, a physical exam, of uh, uh, auscultation exam of a patient, uh, breath sounds after receiving an intertracheal intubation. Here's the patient's left side. And here's the right. And I challenge most uh, viewers to be able to appreciate any difference in the auscultation level of either side. In other words, it seems that uh, the patient has equal breath sounds bilaterally. Uh, and this would be documented as a normal finding to indicate appropriate placement of the endotracheal tube. However, if we add ultrasound to this picture, here's an ultrasound examination, and we'll talk about the details of this examination in the future slides, but I just want to highlight again, even if you've never used uh, ultrasound to evaluate for uh, the lung, to evaluate specifically to see uh, if appropriate aeration is occurring, you can tell that if one, that one side, if you focus your eyes here on the line, which is the lung pleura, if you focus your eyes here, you'll see that there's movement indicating appropriate aeration. However, if you look at this other uh, image here of the other side of this patient's lungs, you appreciate that there's a difference here. There is no movement in this hyperechoic band. And again, we'll talk about the details of this examination in, future, in subsequent slides, but I want to highlight that just by doing the ultrasound examination, we can tell that there's a difference between one side versus the other, something that was not appreciated when we did our auscultation examination. Specifically, what we're looking at here is this is the lung pleura line, and we're seeing this, the sliding effect of the visceral and parietal pleura as the lung is expanding. Uh, in an appropriated aerated lung uh, bed, comparing the other sign here where we are not appreciating lung sliding or that visceral and parietal uh, pleural sliding motion because of the fact that the aeration to the side is different or poor. And again, we'll talk about this in further detail in our subsequent slides. So there has been evidence in the use of point of care ultrasound for the identification of esophageal versus tracheal innovation, with a reported sensitivity and specificity of 100% for adult patients in the operating room, and uh, a sensitivity and specificity uh, reported there for patients undergoing uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. In fact, in, the American Heart Association has now updated their guidelines to include ultrasound as an adjuvant tool to confirm correct endotracheal tube position uh, when, cardia, uh, when CO2 monitoring is not available. So there has been literature to support that ultrasound can be useful in determining esophageal versus tracheal innovation. However, I mentioned earlier on in the first part of this talk that there are a multitude of technologies available that can help facilitate the appropriation of the appropriate position of the endotracheal tube esophageal versus tracheal. How about, however, the use of ultrasound to determine the appropriate location within the trachea itself? We designed an examination using two components of airway ultrasound uh, to evaluate if point of care ultrasound can be used to help facilitate determining the appropriate location of the endotracheal tube within the trachea. The first mode technique was the lung sliding sign. So the lung sliding sign, I already highlighted it uh, briefly in, in the prior two slides, uh, is the phenomenon of looking at the back and forth sliding motion of the parietal and visceral pleura as the lung receives aeration. When you appreciate this 
hyperechoic line here. Here's a rib, and there's another rib, and there's the lung pleura. When you appreciate the sliding motion of the visceral and parietal pleura sliding across each other, that identifies that, in fact, that you have appropriate aeration uh, and can help distinguish esophageal versus tracheal uh, intubation by looking for inaccuracy of, or absence of this lung sliding sign. However, while this technique has been demonstrated to be potentially uh, detect uh, appropriate uh, aeration to one side versus uh, not receiving aeration, uh, meaning the esophageal innovation, reported showing here accuracy of 89%, it's still looking only at the lung sliding sign would not help identify if the intertracheal tube is at risk for a bronchial innovation i.e. is the intertracheal tube too close to the carina. From that standpoint, we designed a second component of our ultrasound examination. We abbreviated our examination the PLUS examination, standing for pulmonary uh, and lung expansion ultrasound. Because of the fact that we knew that uh, patient movement has been shown to cause significant position changes of the intertracheal tube, it's important to verify its appropriate location within the trachea and have a real-time modality to evaluate its appropriate placement. As we know, as I highlight, that this can readily change uh, in the perioperative setting. We actually conducted a double-blinded randomized study to evaluate the ability of this PLUS examination to accurately determine tracheal versus bronchial innovation and determine appropriate location of the intertracheal tube. The specific ultrasound examination uh, we used was a two-part exam. We first looked for the concept of tracheal dilation. So we placed our ultrasound probe. This is a high-frequency uh, ultrasound, linear ultrasound probe, approximately two centimeters superior to the su supersternal notch. And we scanned craniocardially up to the cricothyroid membrane. So from the, the uh, supersternal notch up to the cricothyroid membrane, we would tr scan transversely, and we are looking for tracheal dilation with the endotracheal tube receiving, uh, balloon receiving inflation, deflation of the cuff. So while we are examining, scanning up from the supersternal notch up to the cricothyroid membrane, we are inflating and deflating the cuff of the endotracheal tube to evaluate for this phenomenon shown here of looking specifically at the trachea and the diameter of the trachea to see if we notice an alteration in the trachea from cuff inflation and deflation. By appreciating the inflation and deflation change, that told us where the cuff of our endotracheal tube was, meaning that at the ultrasound plane level where we identified this alteration of the tracheal um, dilation from inflation, that told us that our cuff was there, and i.e. indicating our appropriate position of the endotracheal tube. It was the absence of tracheal dilation that would trigger us to be concerned about potentially having the endotracheal tube at the level of, of potentially being close to a bronchial innovation, meaning to within two centimeters of the carina. Specifically meaning that if we are not able to scan from the supersternal notch up to the cricothyroid membrane, and identify this phenomenon of trachodilation, that would trigger the next component of the examination um, and evaluate for pleural sliding. So both components were performed for the study. Um, however, the logical um, methodology we had was first examining for trachodilation and then evaluating for the phenomenon of pleural sliding. Again, we used for the, the second uh, technique here, we used a high frequency ultrasound probe. We placed it vertically on the anterior chest in between two ribs, identifying the most anterior aspect of the patient's chest. For our standpoint, we placed it in mid-clavicular line, approximately uh, third to fourth rib space, again identifying the most anterior aspect of the patient's chest. And you can show here the demonstration of, of how we had the uh, ultrasound probe placed to evaluate for this phenomenon of lung sliding. Here's an examination here of a patient, again, who had a positive lung exam, where we see, again, the lung pleura line here moving, indicating that the visceral and parietal pleura are sliding across each other, indicating, again, appropriate aeration of the lung tissue. We would use M-mode modality, uh, uh, ultrasound modality, 
to identify this motion artifact. So M mode again is a dagger of ultrasound over time. And so by placing this ultrasound beam over the lung pleura, we would detect for motion artifact, which is shown here. The presence of this motion artifact would indicate again that we have appropriate lung sliding. Compare these top pictures to the bottom in which we still identify this hyperechoic pleural line, but we are not seeing any sort of motion or sliding artifact. And if we again use the M mode modality, we can see that the motion artifact is actually disappeared. And what we see is, is the classic termination of the barcode sign, meaning that we show continue horizontal bands, um, not indicating any motion artifact because there is no motion artifact, indicating again absence of lung sliding. with the focus again being here on the lung pleura shown here. So to review, we talked about the utility of point of care ultrasound and how perhaps it can be implemented in the perioperative setting. We then approached one specific topic of the airway pulmonary ultrasound examination, specifically looking at placing the high frequency linear probe in two uh, locations on the patient uh, it is a two-part component study looking for uh, the identification of the appropriate location of the endotracheal tube. Those two parts of the examination for this PLUS examination study include first, tracheal dilation examination, so placing the probe transversely two centimeters above the suprasternal notch, scanning up to the cricothyroid membrane, and looking for the dilation of the trachea upon inflation of the balloon cuff of the endotracheal tube. So again, what we're seeing here is dilation of the trachea as the, the cuff of the endotracheal tube is receiving air. The second component of the lung examination uh, uh, study uh, or uh, exam is l evaluation for pleural sliding. So here, placing the probe approximately third or fourth rib space, mid-clavicular level, in between the ribs, looking for this phenomenon of the visceral and parietal pleural sliding across each other, looking for the presence of pleural sliding was the second component of the exam.